Engine revolutions, 1,000 steady port and starboard. Turbo pump system, 53 pounds, clear. That's all, Mike. Clear for test whenever you like. Sure wish I was out there with him, Professor. So do I, Jimmy. This is the most revolutionary advance we've made so far. We have never attempted to take supercar to this depth before. The trouble is, if something goes wrong this time, it could be really serious. There are so many things we don't know. One mistake, and it could be the end of Mike and Supercar together. Ready when you are, Dr. Beaker. Ah, charming day, is it not? I feel almost like a swim. Well, I don't. I don't even want to get my feet wet. Let's get on with it. Right. I got you. Closing cockpit cover. Closed, good and tight. I hope. Switching to turbo drive. You sure this is going to work, Doc? I have calculated that it will. Uh, yes. Calculated, the man says. I still don't reckon the hull's built to stand it. Drive system's OK, though. I'll give you that. Thank you. When you two have finished arguing, I'm going down to find out who's right. Oh, just one more thing. Up periscope. Scope operating. Turbo pump operating. Engines operating. Everything operating above water. Now let's see if it all works 400 feet below the surface. He can say that again. Hey, wait. Props on the set from the lab. Yeah, hello, Professor. Everything would um, appear to be all right at this end. How do your instruments read? All's well. Can you hear me, Mike? Roger, Professor, at the moment. I still don't see why we just can't go on using Clearview, Professor. Well, Jimmy, in a way we can, but until we design a different set, no radio waves can reach us or supercar while it's underwater. Radio waves just don't travel underwater very well, so Clearview can't transmit a picture. <laughs> What's Dr. Beaker doing about it, then? Well, he's arranged for a transmitting aerial to be floated above Supercar on a buoy while she's underwater. With a cable, Supercar and Mike can get messages to the surface, and from there, we can receive them in the normal way. Except that the cable is just a nuisance. It'll be all right as long as it doesn't foul something or the cable cover doesn't leak and short circuit everything. Oh, well, here goes anyway. Engines full ahead. I'm going to give them just a short burst on normal running just to get started. Okay, so far. Yeah, Consul to pilot. How are things, my dear fellow? Okay. Just crossed the water line. I'll cut vertical drive and see if she settles. Congratulations! She floats! My dear chap, we knew that already. What we really want to know is, how far will she sink? We'll find out. Flooding ballast tanks, port and starboard. How am I doing, Professor? By my readings, both port and starboard tanks are filling at the same rate. But watch your own meters. You may have to compensate when you start your forward dive. Any fool can get to the bottom, but it takes skill to dive. Is that it? Quarter throttle, then. And let's see how she goes down. Be careful, my dear fellow. If anything goes wrong, blow both tanks immediately and surface. Roger, I'll do that. Looks steady as a rock to me, except for that cable trailing behind him. Hello, Professor. He seems to be making a steady descent. Uh, instrument reading, please. Roger, Dr. Beaker. He should be at periscope depth soon. Pilot to console, pilot to console. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Mike. Uh, loud and clear. Well, that's something. How about you, Professor? Anything getting through on clear view? What's that on the screen now, Professor? Well, that ought to be what Mike sees through the periscope on his screen. He's relaying it to us by way of the transmitting boy. Seems quite stable. I'm taking her all the way down now. 
Tank's full now, cutting throttles. I'll just let her settle slowly. 100 feet. 150. 200. <laughs> Quiet, Mitch. Is everything all right, Professor? I think so. 250. Steady as she goes, Mike. Four hundred. That's wonderful. How does it feel down there, Mike? Fine, Professor. Guess that's phase one of the operation completed. Water's clear, no trouble. Boy's still out there. He must be just about directly under it. It's mighty quiet down here. Not much company. Or at any rate, nobody seems interested in me. So I'll give you my readings and try the engines again. Ready, Professor? Go ahead, Mike. You mean he's made it? Supercar's okay? Did you hear that, Mitch? We've done it. <laughs> Professor. What is it, Mike? Water. Water? Doc, your hull sprung a leak somewhere. Always said it would. You better tell him to come up fast. Yeah, Mike, yeah, how bad is the leak? Nothing much, Beaker. It's just that I don't like the idea of any. Seems to be coming from around the lower edge of the cockpit cover someplace. Maybe I just didn't close it properly. Or maybe the seals work the other way around. After all, we never tried it before. Mike, surface as fast as you can. Roger, Professor. He should never have stopped the engines. He needs them to blow the water out of the ballast tanks. Bigger! Yes, Professor. How soon can he come up, do you think? That would depend on how easily the engines start. Uh, uh, console to pilot. Console to pilot. Still here. Where else would I be? Start ascent at once. Roger. Charging port engine. I hope it works as well under 400 feet of water as it does under 40. 5,000. 7,000. This is going to be tricky, Dr. Beaker. I'm not sure whether we ought to take her the whole way up to 15 with the additional load. What do you think? I would um, hazard a guess at 11,000. 11,000 it is. Coming up to 10 now. 10, 5. 11,000. Fire port. She didn't catch. Well, now we know. What happened, Professor? It's the extra load of having to pump water from the tanks as soon as it fires, which makes it difficult. I don't want to worry you, Professor, but this leak is as bad as ever. In fact, I'd say it's a shade worse now. And if it starts getting at some of these electrical circuits, the inside of this cockpit is going to look like the 4th of July. I'll try again, though. Charging port. And I said I didn't want to get my feet wet. Well, you can't always win. 7,000, 9, 11, 12, 12, 5. Wait for it, Mike. Wait as long as you possibly can. You may not get another chance to charge it. 13. This isn't doing the hell much good either. 14, 14, 5, 15,000. Fire port. Tell him not to bother with the starboard engine. Yeah, you are quite right. He only needs one to blow air into the ballast tanks. It'll be slower, but I'll try. Blowing ballast tanks, port and starboard. Coming up any time now. I need some forward speed, though, for steering. I'll do my best on one engine. Quarter throttle, port engine. Steady now, Mike. <laughs> She's moving. Hey, something's happened. Seems like we fouled something. Cut your motors, Mike. Roger. I'll take a look around with the scope. It's a cable. We fouled a cable of some sort. Anything marked on the map around here? Nothing marked here. I don't like the sound of this one bit. Tell him to shut everything off. Motors, generators, 
Everything. It, my dear fellow, why? Because he may have fouled a mine cable, that's why. And it'll be an old mine and darn tricky. Maybe even acoustic. And if that's so, just tell him if he's got to breathe, do it quietly. <laughs> My dear Bill, you are surely not going down in that. Well, I'm sure his little apple's not going down without it. But, but have you much experience of working with mines? Enough. Get a report from Mike, will you? Console to pilot, console to pilot. Come in, Mike. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Roger. How's things your end? Listen, Mike, you've got to get out of there as soon as you can. Bill thinks you've fouled a mine cable. I'm staying put. If it's lasted this long without blowing up, it'll last a bit longer. But we don't know what sort of mine it was in the first place. Mike, it may only have been activated by your hitting the cable just now. Or it might be acoustic. Acoustic? Yes, th that means a noise could set it off. Uh, supercar's engines, for instance. You mean it could go up any minute now, even if Mike doesn't move it anymore? <laughs> it could do. And besides, when a mine's that old and gets seawater inside it, there's no knowing what it may do. How's the leak, Mike? At the moment, there's only a little water coming in. I'll be able to last out until Bill gets down here in that comic diver's outfit of his. Be prepared, that's my motto. It's a pity I wasn't prepared enough to think of a telephone. But in any case, I wouldn't want the wire trailing all over. All set? What are you going to do? Walk down, see the setup, and whether we can do anything about it. If I can free the mine from supercar, okay. Otherwise, I'm not touching it. I'm not that much of a hero. Tell Bill to get a move on. My feet are getting wet. If it keeps coming in at this rate, I'll have to switch off all the electrics. I can't have it shorting all over the place. Well, you know what you're doing, Mike. Just don't leave it too late, that's all. Don't worry, Professor, I won't. But in any case, the more water there is inside, the better it'll be to open the cockpit cover when I do want to get out, if I do. All right, my dear fellow. Will be when I get in the water. Out here, this thing weighs a ton. I sure wish we could get Mike out. We can always build another supercar. <laughs> and I don't believe Bill knows much about mines. He never told me he did. Ah, stop worrying, Jimmy. It won't do any of us any good. Bill's on his way down now, and he and Mike between them can work out what's best. Yeah, I suppose so. Dr. Beaker, you don't suppose a fish could set this thing off, do you? Possible, but... Um... Uh, unlikely. Uh, why? Because I can see something coming my way right now. It looks like somebody's nightmare. A fish, you mean? Of course it's a fish. At least, I think it's a fish. Hey, it's none too friendly. What do I do, Doc? I, I, I'm not certain. I, I need more information. And Bill will be down there in a minute, too. Stop him! That thing could rip a hole even in the side of supercar, let alone a diving suit. You gotta stop him, Doc. I can't. He's already underwater. Uh, Mike, uh, what does this fish look like? Nothing you ever saw. Huge mouth, big teeth, and a light on its head. And it's attacking. <laughs> it does that a few more times. That's the end of supercar. It must weigh a ton. Bill comes along. He won't stand a chance. <laughs> Come on, Doc. Think of something fast. Uh, wait a minute. Did you say it had a light? Well, sort of, yeah. Then it is most probably a deep-sea species. Uh, why it's come up, we don't know. Hurry, Doc. He's making another pass. Mike, switch radar scope to 400 megacycles. Roger, will do. What's the idea? Just do as I say. I'll explain as we go along. Now. Switch the VHF to 200 megacycles. Roger, 200 megacycles it is. Hey, Doc, I'm getting a high pitch sound coming from the internal speaker. Good, Mike, that's what I'm after. Now, if we can produce a further harmonic in the ultrasonic range, uh, let me see, yes. Mike, detune slightly on VHF until you get maximum sound. Okay, Doc, it's getting louder. 
Hurry, Doc. Now listen carefully, Mike. If you now switch the VHF radio to transmit, it should create an underwater shock wave. I am hoping that if the fish is close enough to supercar, it may feel the impact and beat a hasty retreat. I hope you're right, Doc. I don't know who came off worse, Doc, on that last collision. It seems to have quieted down. All right, Mike. Leave everything as it is, and don't forget, don't transmit until the last moment. Here she comes again. Okay, Doc, now. Doc! Doc, you're a genius. How did you know it would work? Well, Mike, I, I feel that now is the time that I must confess that I didn't think it would work. Oh, thanks. Well, I'm glad you didn't tell me before, anyway. Haven't seen any sign of Bill. How long since he left you? He went in about five minutes ago. Well, if he doesn't come down soon, I'll be so wet, I might as well do the job myself. I'll have to cut all the electrics now or there'll be trouble. That means radio silence from now on. But that's better than having all the fuses blow when the water reaches the wiring. Cutting main power now. Nothing to do now but wait. Can you hear me? Sure, what's the position? It's a mine, all right. Hooked over the wing stub. Can you shift it? Not a hope. You could back off, though. No engines. If I tried, the whole system would probably short out. Suppose I do cut you loose. How are you gonna get to the surface? The way I figure it is this. When I fouled the cable, the tanks were more than half full of air anyway. I was starting to surface. You think the cable's holding you down, then? That's about it. If you can cut me loose, I reckon I'd just float to the top. Maybe not very gracefully, but I'd float. Right. Hold on a few minutes. I'm afraid we shan't be able to contact either of them. Uh, Mike switched off all the electrical system. I know, Dr. Baker. I heard just before he went off the air. We'll just have to wait. The professor. How's he gonna bring Supercar up, even if Bill can free the cable, if he can't use the engines? Take it easy, take it nice and easy. And I hope Bill has a sense not to try and mess about with the mine itself. Dr. Beaker? Yes, Professor. Can you see any sign of them? I can see the marker boy. And I thought I saw some bubbles come up beside it, uh, which could mean Bill has at least reached him. Hey, Bill, how's it coming? Nearly through, but I thought of a snag. What's that? When I cut her loose, she'll float to the top, right? Right, so? And you reckon Supercar will float up too? Well, I hope so. So two things. One, the mine may hit your radio boy when it surfaces, in which case, it's goodbye to both of us. Nothing we can do about that. We'll have to take a chance. And two, what's to stop your hitting the both of them when you float up? You're not going to have any control without motors. You're right. I'll have to try and start them again, if it's not too late. You cut the mine loose and hammer on the hull when you've done it. I'll see if she'll start. No news yet, Professor? <laughs> <laughs> no news, Jimmy. But don't worry, Mike will bring Supercar up somehow. If it's humanly possible, Mike will do it. Uh, uh, Professor, I think I see something. It appears to be a round object. It's a mine. Right, let's try her. Main power on. Pilot the console, pilot the console. Professor! Professor! Hello, Mike. Now get this. I'm going to try and start the starboard engine, if the water will let me. Bill's got loose the mine, and I don't want to hit it when I surface. 
But are you sure it's safe, Mike? Well, I hope so. Safer than risking a collision going up without power. I disagree. I don't think it's safe to come up at all with a mine still floating free. What do you suggest, then? I haven't much time to waste. Well, it had better be detonated before you try the ascent. Are you sure it won't damage the hull even more? It should be all right at the depth you have reached. A surface explosion does not spread as far as an underwater one. Well, you know best, Doc. What are you going to do? I shall um, wait for Bill to come out, then fire at the mine with a rifle from the um, truck. Ah, and here he comes now. OK, Dr. Beaker. I never knew he could hold a rifle, let alone point it in the right direction. I suppose I'm liable to be here for the duration anyway. Out at the console. Yes, Mike? You reckon Dr. Beaker's a hot shot? It wouldn't surprise me, Mike. Well, it would me. Mm, the wind's stronger than I thought. Console, can you hear me? Calling console. We hear you, Mike. The mine must have damaged the radio boy for a moment. He did hit it. <laughs> well, now to try and get her off the bottom. After all the things she's been through, I wouldn't be surprised if she refused to start. Are you there, Dr. Beaker? Yeah, Beaker here, pilot. Nice shooting, Doc. Now let's see what I can do. Charging port. Trouble. Some of the wiring's damp already. I'll have to keep going, though. 5,000. 7,000. 9,000. <coughs> I'm sorry, this place is getting full of fumes. 11,000. 13. 14. That's it, buy one? That's it. She's caught. Quarter throttle. And I hope we make it. California, here I come. Boy, that was close, folks. Next time we test, let's pick a nice, peaceful bay with no mines or hungry fish, eh? I said I didn't want to get my feet wet. Supercar sure looks a mess. How long will it take to fix, Doc? No, oh, not long. I, I should estimate about five days. We should be ready for our second dive a week from today. We? Who's going to have to take her down again? Oh, don't answer. I know. But I'll let you in on a little secret. What's that? The next time I go down, I'll borrow that spacesuit you've got on. <laughs> Swift as can be, watch it flying through the air. It travels in space or under the sea, and it can journey anywhere. Supercar, supercar. It travels on land or roams the skies through the heavens' stormy rage. It's Mercury man, and everyone cries. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar. Supercar! Supercar!